You told us Joe Biden was fine. You told us Joe Biden had no issues, that cognitively he was not declined, that he was the guy, that he was in full control of his faculties and also the uh, full control of the United States of America. Do you still, you still trying to sell that narrative or are you ready to come clean? Here's what she said. Joe Biden is a, an extremely accomplished, um, experienced and um, and, and capable. And, and, and hold on, before I play this whole clip, watch her eyes because the reporter's over here. And as soon as she starts to answer the question, she looks up over here, Joe Biden? Oh, um, he is. And that's the first sign. If you ever talk to like a CIA spy catcher or if you ever watch like, you know, uh, Meet the Parents, where Gaylord Fokker and Robert De Niro are doing the inquiry, you know, that kind of... Anyway, if you ever... You know that the first sign of somebody lying is them avoiding eye contact. So if she'd, if she'd looked right at the reporter and said, oh yeah, Joe Biden, he's great. I've worked with him. He's, he's got everything under control. But she, she goes, Joe Biden? Um, and she looks away immediately. Something I just noticed. Because, you know, I... I, know, I mean, I noticed those things. Here's the full clip. Joe Biden is a, an extremely accomplished... Um, experienced and um, and and capable in every way that anyone would want if they're president. You never Absolutely. saw anything like what happened at the debate night behind closed doors with him. It was a bad debate. People have bad debates. Should he? That, he is absolutely. But that's the reason why you're here, and he's not running for the top of the ticket. Well, you'd have to ask him if that's the only reason why. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it sucks to get caught in your own lie, doesn't it? What, what about Joe Biden? Is he capable? He's fully capable. But what happened to him on debate night? He had a bad debate, but it, it's the reason you're here. Uh, you'd, you'd have to ask Joe Biden about that. I bet if somebody did ask Joe Biden about it, you know what I bet he'd say? If he wasn't, in, if, if he wasn't afraid, here's the thing. If Joe Biden wasn't afraid that his son was going to go to prison or that he was going to go to prison or that they were going to release all kinds of damaging information, because that's, you know, look, they all have stuff on each other. They all got each other's, they've all got each other's, you know, what's in a vice and they're squeezing. And if Joe Biden opens his mouth and tells the truth about why he stepped down, they will squeeze until they explode. And everyone, okay, Jill's going to go to jail and Hunter's going to go to jail for sure. And there's nothing Joe Biden can do about it. But if he keeps his mouth shut and he plays ball, then Joe Biden will be okay. So he's not coming out there and telling the truth. And Kamala Harris is obfuscating and saying, well, you're going to have to talk to Joe Biden about why Joe Biden's not running. Really, we should talk to Barack Obama and Nancy Pelosi, but they're in the same boat. They're not going to talk either. And Joe Biden, who is still, don't forget, the president of the United States of America, is not campaigning for Kamala Harris, but he's still out there talking. He's still out there saying things. And every time the guy opens his mouth, it kind of seems like, he doesn't even want, it kind of seems like he's campaigning for Donald Trump. Listen to what he said yesterday about this political campaign and specifically President Donald Trump. Bizarre. It sounds like I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We got to lock him up. Politically lock him up. We got to lock him up. We got to lock him up. And then he realized, uh oh, I just said, I just said what they've been accused. I've been doing what they're accusing me of doing for all along. We, uh, I mean, politically, we've got to lock him up. That's not what he said. He said, because Donald Trump said repeatedly, Joe Biden, we got to lock him up. And now Joe Biden is saying. Bizarre. It sounds like I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We got to lock him up. <laughs> politically lock him up. Yeah, we got to. We got to politically, what does that even mean? What does that mean? Oh, politically, we've got to lock him up. You mean lock him up, like lock up the election? Don't worry. Donald Trump has the election all locked up. You guys, you don't need to worry about that. We're totally, he's totally fine uh, in that situation. But Kamala Harris went on. She went on to talk about uh, you know, leaders in her party and the people that she feels are, are helping and aiding her and really are the future of the United States of America. And one of them was... Well, I'll just let you tell her. Let her I tell was her. just with one of the, the, the leaders and I think opinion leaders in the Republican Party, Liz Cheney. Yeah, okay. That's what... <laughs> now, Liz Cheney, Liz Cheney is not a leader and she's not a Republican. Uh, yet Kamala Harris wants you to believe that, oh, Liz Cheney, she's one of the thought leaders of the Republican Party and I was just with her. <laughs> okay. All right, we're not... No one's buying that. But it does bring up a good question because... 
Liz Cheney is kind of the anti-Tulsi. If you think about it, Tulsi Gabbard was a Democrat. She was in the House of Representatives and she saw the light. She saw how tyrannical these people were and how anti-America these people were and how much they hated the Constitution, how much they abused their power. And she said, I don't want to be a Democrat anymore. I'm leaving your party. I don't think Donald Trump should be impeached for what he did because he didn't do anything impeachable. And so I'm not going to vote to impeach him. She was voted out. She was ostracized. And she just kind of, you know, hung around in limbo until Donald Trump ran for his second term. And then she jumped on board saying, hey, can I help? Because I really like what you're doing. I like what you're I like what what you got going on here. And Donald Trump says, absolutely. Come aboard. Help me with my debate prep. Go out and campaign for me. And now Tulsi Gabbard is a full fledged member of the GOP. She is a Republican. She bleeds red. And Liz Cheney's the total opposite. Liz Cheney came from Republican royalty. She's the daughter of Dick. Dick. She's the daughter of Dick Cheney. And Dick Cheney, for those of you that know, pretty much ran the entire George W. Bush administration. J Dick Cheney was, he, I think he's the only man, and I have to double check, but I think he's the only man in history who was both um, defense secretary and then president I'm sorry, defense secretary, vice president, and there was one other position that I'm missing. But he did every, every power position in Washington, D.C. you could think of. Dick Cheney held that position at some point in his life. He knew every office. He knew the ins and outs of every organization. He knew where the bodies were buried. He knew the insider information. He knew the secrets. He knew who was sleeping with who and who betrayed who and who killed who. And he, and he controlled Washington, D.C. And that's the reason... George W. picked him to be vice president of the United States. And that's why a lot of people believe that Dick Cheney ruled with an iron fist over George W. And when you bring in Donald Rumsfeld, forget about it. The three of them, you remember, they were the trifecta. They were the trinity. And that guy started more wars and profited off of more wars and took advantage of more, of more bloodshed around the world than any other vice president in history. And, and now his daughter, Liz, daughter of Dick, is is a thought leader that Kamala Harris and the Democrat Party is 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 bringing into her fold. In fact, the uh, reporter I forget her name even asked her, "Is this someone that you would work with if you became president?" You've spent a lot of time on the campaign trail with former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, as mm -hmm. you referenced. Mm -hmm. Is she somebody who um, is she somebody who would consider putting in the cabinet? Have you talked with her about this topic? I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted means yes. In fact, here's what I believe is happening behind the scenes. Dick Cheney, very powerful man in the Republican Party, still not the real Republican Party, but the old school Republican Party, uh, still knows a lot about what's going on in Washington, D.C. I believe that Dick Cheney is working behind the scenes to keep his daughter, Liz Cheney, in power and keep his daughter, Liz Cheney, in the public eye. Keep her it, try to make her relevant. <laughs> I mean, the last thing he wants her to do is come, and ho come home and live on the ranch, right? He's like, oh, God, I don't want... I got one lesbian daughter. I can't have another one living in my basement because she screwed up her whole her chances in, the, in her own party. So he's trying to do whatever he can. I believe that Dick Cheney is working furiously behind the scenes with Barack Obama, with Kamala Harris, and with the Democrat Party to get Kamala Harris elected so his daughter can serve in the cabinet. Because when asked, is Liz Cheney going to be in the cabinet? Kamala said, I'll keep you posted. You've spent a lot of time on the campaign trail with former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, as mm -hmm. you referenced. Mm -hmm. Is she somebody who um, is she somebody who would consider putting in the cabinet? Have you talked with her about this topic? I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted. Oh, she's so coy, isn't she? She's so, of course, she's going to put her in the cabinet. She's going to put her in the cabinet because she's a thought leader. I was just with one of the, the, the leaders and I think opinion leaders in the Republican Party, Liz Cheney. Mm. And that is, that, is, uh, that is a real key there because I think that her biggest ally in this whole thing is no longer Barack Obama. It's no longer Susan Rice. It's Liz Cheney and by, by association, uh, Dick. Dick is what Kamala really wants. Um, she wants his help getting a little, that sounded worse than I, you know, let's move on. So <laughs> something else Kamala said, um, what, and this is, this is really scary. We joke a lot on this show because that's what we do, but some of these things that she says are really scary and people should pay attention to. And while I would never urge you to watch NBC for yourself, like God, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. 
If, I, if you showed me my, I don't know who my worst enemy is, but if you, it's probably, let's be honest, it's probably Kamala Harris. If you brought my worst enemy in front of me, I would never say to them, you need to watch NBC News. But this interview was very telling. And that's why I'm bringing you the highlights. Something else Kamala Harris said would be that she would give no exception on abortions, which means that if you're a Christian or if you are a member of a Christian organization or if you're a church group, Catholic Church, for example, she would have, there'd be no exceptions for abortion in her administration. And if you believe that abortion is evil and satanic and wrong and murder, and if you're pro-life till, you know, till you die, then you are, you are not going to be given any kind of exception or exemption in the Kamala Harris administration. What concessions would be on the table? Religious exemptions, for example, is that something that you would consider? Like I don't think we should be cards? making concessions when we're talking about a fundamental freedom to make decisions about your own body. To Republicans like, for example, uh, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, who would back something like this on a Democratic agenda if, in fact, Republicans control Congress, would you offer them an olive branch? Or is that off the table? Is that not an option for you? I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals i mean why not you've engaged in hypothetical you, that's all you do is engage in hype that's what campaigning is campaigning is answering questions hey what happens in this scenario oh i would bomb the hell out of them what happens in this scenario oh they know what would i here's what i would do specific that's what donald trump does donald trump says if i'm president hypothetical i would drill baby drill Okay, there you go. That's a solution to our energy problem and our economic problem and our inflation problem look at that kill three birds with one drill that's great. Uh, president Trump, if you were president, what would you do about the flow of immigration into our country and the drugs and the human trafficking and the crime and the homelessness and all the other bad things that happened with it? He would say, oh, I would shut down the border immediately and then I would begin the largest mass deportation effort in the history of mankind. Hypothetical question, specific answer. Kamala Harris won't give you a hypothetical, which means there'd be no concessions for abortion. If you're pro-life, if you're a Catholic, a Christian, if you believe that life begins at conception, if you believe in the sanctity, sanctity of that human life, and that women who get pregnant don't necessarily, ha it's not their, it's not their health care, it's their poor choices. But if you believe that, then Kamala Harris doesn't care about you, and she's going to force you to pay taxes that will pay for abortions. And if you are a Catholic church or if you're a Christian organization, she will force you to offer free abortion as part of the health care plan to your employees. That's something that the Democrats have always done. That's something that they'll continue to do. Uh, she also talked about the gender gap because there's a big gender gap. I don't know if you know this, not a lot of dudes like Kamala Harris, and that's a big problem for her. Black dudes, Latino dudes, white dudes. Dudes are, you know, white dudes for Kamala is probably one of the smallest organizations in the, in the entire world. It's like, I think Jews for Jesus has more members than white dudes for Kamala does. But there's this huge gender gap, and she was asked about that. Listen to what she said. To implement the agenda that you want to implement, you have to win first. You have to win the of White course, House. And right now, course. there is a big gender gap in this race. Fewer men support you right now than they did President Biden. Some of your allies have suggested there's sexism at play. I wonder, do you think there is sexism at play here? Let me just tell you something. You've come to my events, and you will see there are men and women at those events. Yeah, but the big problem is you can't really tell which is which. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's like, yeah, I went to a Kamala Harris event. Were there men there? I'm not sure. Were there women there? I d there were people there. I couldn't tell which was which. Okay, well, that's a problem. <laughs> there's, there's men there. Really? Which ones? You know, the long ones with the moobs. Oh, those are the men? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are the women? You know, they're the, they're the ones with the short hair and the... Anyway, I, I digress. Anyway, no, yes, so there's a... <laughs> <laughs> There's a gender gap for sure. Whether it be small events or events with 10,000 people. So the experience that I am having is one in which it is clear that regardless of someone's gender, they want to know that their president has a plan to lower cost, that their president has a plan to secure America in the context of our position around the world. They want a president of the United States who honors our military, who understands the importance of America's leadership around international rules and norms. Yeah, and that's why they want Donald Trump. And it's not just it's not just white men who are, don't have college educations. It's black men. It's Latino men. It's pretty much pretty much everybody. In fact, if you look at the latest polls, which we're going to do here in just a minute, and if you see oh the clips I'm about to play you from black voters in Pennsylvania, 
I mean, there's nobody wants Kamala Harris for president. Listen, before we get to that, though, uh, I want to share with you one thing that I've been I'm, and this is going to sound weird, but I have been for the last like week or so really obsessed with testosterone. I know that sounds weird, but I watched the video that I shared with you last uh, week from V Shred and it was really fascinating to me. And even like my wife now, I'm like, hey, you need to go buy more of this and less of that. And she goes, why? I go testosterone. And she gives me that weird look. But, you know, it's it's important. People think, men especially think, that their testosterone levels go down as a result of aging. That's not true. Because look at Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Similar age, very different testosterone levels. Look at Tim Walls and Donald Trump. Donald Trump is older than Tim Walls, but one of them is low T and one of them is... Well, Donald Trump. And the reason for that is because of the foods that you eat. And like I said, there's one food in, in particular that's been scientifically shown to devastate testosterone levels in men, and they have no idea. And it's not junk food, it's not sugar, it's something that you're actually told is good for you, but it's not. It drains your energy, it wrecks your testosterone levels, it crushes your motivation, uh, and it destroys your sex drive. But here's the good news. Cutting this one thing out of your diet could completely transform the way you feel. And the folks at V-Shred have, have created a brand new video that confirms everything that I'm telling you right now. If you'd like to go watch this video and learn what's draining your testosterone levels, what food is destroying your, your energy and your, and your weight loss capability, go to sculptnation.com slash MK sculptnation.com slash mk i conveniently put a link to that very video in the uh description of this video so you can go back and watch it later v shreds experts break it all down and they tell you the simple change that could make all the difference that could turn you from a tim walls into a donald trump and all you have to do is go to sculptnation.com slash mk all right let low t tampon tim <laughs> Let's get back. <laughs> Let's get back to oh, where where, where do we even where do we even at? So this Kamala Harris interview, which is so devastating, uh, the thing she says, and I think the problem is she's trying to not come across as weak when that's exactly what she is, and she's trying to come across as somebody who's capable, and she's incapable. She forgot the state of Michigan for crying out loud. When you're in a close race, and every swing state, every battleground ground state, every vote matters. It's pretty. Pretty important to remember which states you're campaigning in. And why do you think that's not landing with voters? Oh, because but in I the think numbers, it it's the opposite. Former President Trump leads you on this issue. Well, when I'm out, this is why I'm going out to Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and and um, and, and Michigan. And Michigan yeah. Excuse me, just got in late this morning, actually. Um, but going to three states yesterday, and I'm going to continue being on the road. Well, to earn the somebody just lost the state of Michigan. Kidding, she lost the state of Michigan like months ago. <laughs> When the United Auto Workers came out and said, we're not endorsing you, she pretty much lost Michigan. And, and that's why she forgot about them. Kamala Harris forgot about Michigan, and Michigan has forgotten about her.